Audiobook Academy. Book Summary. Conrad, The Factory Made Boy. By Christine Nurslinger. Conrad, The Factory Made Boy is a humorous and clever look at the interaction between adults and children. The characters' strengths and weaknesses are depicted in a genuine manner for each one of them. Despite their best efforts, adults aren't always the most knowledgeable or wisest people. Most of the time, the youngsters have better solutions and ideas than their parents. The story revolves around a factory-made youngster who is reared to perfection. Berta Bartolotti, an eccentric woman who isn't responsible enough to be a mother but is willing to do anything for her new son, received him by mistake. When the manufacturer recognizes their error, they attempt to take Conrad away and send him to another family by force, but Berta refuses to allow it. Her neighbor, Kitty, lends a helping hand in protecting her young child. His lone buddy, she was able to sympathize with Conrad's bizarre antics. Egon, Conrad's father and Berta's acquaintance, also lends a hand. Each character is unique, and they all benefit from the experiences of the others. Differences between them are what allow them to work together so well. When it comes to Conrad's parents, Egon is a bit stuffy and constantly adheres to the rules, whereas Berta believes all of that to be dreary and uninteresting. As a result, Egon ends up allowing Conrad to break the rules in order to keep him around. Additionally, Conrad and Kitty are very different in their personalities, Conrad is extremely well-behaved and does not think about breaking the rules, but Kitty teaches him that occasionally breaking the rules is necessary. Berta's residence is the setting for the beginning of the tale. It was time for the dishes and work after a hearty breakfast. Like her mother, she talks to herself and refers to herself as sweet kid. Because it's the only way she'll pay attention to him, her husband also calls her that. Unfortunately, her mother passed away a long time ago, and her husband mysteriously left her as well. Because she had goldfish in the tub, she was unable to bathe. Because she didn't want to confine them to a glass bowl for the rest of their lives, she put them in the bathtub. As a result, she had to use a ladder to reach the doors of the shower cabin since she had tied a laundry rope to the window frame. In the end, she chose to chemically wash herself, so she removed her makeup and reapplied it. Bright and warm hues dominated the look of the model's makeup. On this particular day, Berta felt as though she were in her 20s. She avoided discussing her age at all costs. She was a carpet maker for life. She was accompanied by a firm called Barlady and Company, but she was the one who did all the actual labor. Her rugs were exquisite, but they cost a fortune. Berta spent much of her free time with the 55-year-old pharmacist Egon, who she saw on Tuesdays and Saturdays. She went to see him once a week and he went to see her. After their appointments, they'd go to the theater or the movies, and then out to dinner. On the other days of the week, they avoided each other's company. They'd address each other as Mr. Magister and Mrs. if they ever met. Berta's door was pounded by an unknown assailant. A white wrap gift was delivered to her by the delivery man. Berta had no idea what she had ordered because it was so heavy. Buying stuff she didn't really need because they were on sale was a problem she had. An apologetic message and a warning that she cannot return the gift if she opens it were found in the package she opened. Miss Hunbert, Onbert, and Armenbert was signed beneath it. Because she couldn't make out the name on the signature, she assumed it was someone else's. She removed a large can from the package, believing it to be food and opened it because she was hungry. Berta looked inside the can and saw a small dwarf who said, Good day darling mum. He also instructed her to release a liquid contained within the package, as he is unable to function properly without it. In response to Berta's actions, the dwarf resorted to a seven-year-old child, who handed over his birth certificate and other official documents. Because his father was listed as Conrad August Bartolotti on his birth certificate, Berta surmised that her husband had ordered Conrad because he wanted a male but this turned out to be false. Berta made a trip into town to pick up a few necessities for Conrad, including a bed and some candies. Berta liked to stand out from the crowd, thus she wore brightly colored, glittering, and adorned clothing. Even though he observed boys dressed differently outside his window, Conrad didn't go home and ask his mother to purchase him something new. His demeanor was one of humility as he received the gifts she had given him. Berta offered him ice cream, but he began questioning her about whether ice cream should be eaten as a summer dessert. Because Berta was ignorant of the rules surrounding ice cream consumption, Conrad promised that he would refrain from partaking until she did. He went to Berta's house on Saturday, which is when they usually hang out. Conrad was introduced to her by her and she refers to him as her child. Aside from his intelligence, Egon was enamored by his obedience and manners. Berta offered Conrad a piece of candy, 
but he was disappointed because he knew he shouldn't consume sweets so close to bedtime. There were hours of shame for each child to master before they could exit the final treatment department, he explained. Because he wasn't supposed to, he stopped talking about the factory. Only in the most dire circumstances was it permissible to bring it up. After all, Egon felt compelled to step up and be Conrad's father right away. However, Berta was less than happy because she thought Egon was a bore. Egon felt that Conrad should attend to school, so he enrolled him. On Sunday, Berta went to see her neighbor's daughter Kitty, who lived across the street. In order to help Conrad get ready for his first day of school, she took books from her own shelf. When Berta gave birth to a son, Kitty's parents were startled. Kitty's mother agreed to let her go see her son that afternoon and bring him her books. Egon had come to study with his son, and the two of them went for a walk when they finished their studies. Berta's flat was empty when Kitty showed there, and Conrad was out for a stroll at the time. Berta dropped Conrad off at school on Monday, but he insisted on going to the third grade rather than the first or second since he thought the former would be too boring. Because he had never been to school, Berta was worried about his aspirations, and she couldn't enroll him in the third grade. German school and Congo certificate was on its way to her, thanks to his thoughtfulness. Using the vacant spots, he scribbled on them that he had completed the second grade and was ready for a new challenge, the third grade. In response to Berta's question about whether or not he had attended the school, he claimed he hadn't, but that it was a branch of the German institution. The three of them went to school together. He got into third grade even though he hadn't been registered for a month, thanks to the woman who looked after new kids. Conrad was picked up by Egon and Berta at exactly 12 o'clock. When he met Kitty, she invited him to her birthday celebration at 3 o'clock the next day. He accepted her invitation. Conrad attended Florian and Kitty's birthday party, as well as a group of pals from Kitty's class. Florian was a bully because he was a huge kid and towered over Conrad. Because Kitty supported Conrad, Anton from Kitty's class was jealous. Conrad was the best at all of the games the kids played. He was a target of Anton and Florian's wrath. As a result, Kitty and Conrad acted as parents while others pelted them with walnut shells. Florian hit Conrad in the stomach because he thought the latter was bored during the party. Kitty, on the other hand, fought back, despite Conrad's lack of resistance. Kitty told Conrad she loved him as everyone departed. Egon came to Berta's house later and started complaining about Berta's teaching techniques and claiming that Conrad should live with him instead. Despite how much he adored both Egon and Berta, Conrad has decided to stay with his mother in the hopes of spending more time with Kitty. It took Conrad three weeks from the moment he arrived at Berta to spend significant time with Kitty. Kitty was forced to go home alone on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays because they weren't in the same class. When Kitty was out of the picture, Florian attacked Conrad and punched him. Because he was a favorite of the teacher, Conrad was despised by his peers as well. In fact, she even referred to him as her substitute so that he would have to maintain order in the classroom when the instructor was absent. Because Conrad would have to write their names down if they disobeyed, the youngsters had no choice but to comply. In spite of Kitty's best efforts, Conrad was unable to resist the temptation to rat on his buddies because of the way they were seen in the factory. Bert refused to open a letter from the factory due of her terrible feelings, but Kitty persuaded her to do so one day. According to the letter, she was required to return Conrad as a result of an error. In truth, Berta didn't even order him, she ordered a product that wasn't even being made in the plant anymore. Berta was adamant about not returning him to Kitty, so she began formulating strategies for how to do just that. They made the decision to take Conrad to Egon's apartment by rolling him up in a carpet. The pharmacy where he worked was just a few floors up from where he resided. Asked why Conrad wasn't helping her take the carpet to the dry cleaners, Kitty replied that no one can find him and added that she'd find out more from Berta. In order to prevent Conrad from being returned to the factory, Berta and Kitty brought Conrad to Egon's house and re-educated him. A thin, light blue-suited man paid Berta a visit. He had been on the prowl for some time in the general vicinity in search of Conrad. In order to cover her tracks, she claimed he had departed three days earlier and that she had no interest in him. Conrad was being taught by Kitty at the same time. She thought he used obscene language and exhibited a lack of respect for others. She told her mother she was tutoring a buddy in arithmetic, but that was a lie. The following morning, three guys arrived at Berta's door, and she refused to let them in. Using the window, they made it in. Because they claimed to have seen Conrad's homework with a date of yesterday. They doubted her story that he had departed four days earlier. 
Seven people clothed in bright blue were spotted by Berta as she entered Egon's pharmacy. It took two hours for the pharmacist to make a special medicine for them. They opted to wait in the pharmacy's parking lot. Even though Conrad was a well-behaved child, they began calling him. Because Kitty was able to re-educate him, he decided against it. He climbed down the fence, kicked a woman who was waiting for him, and began singing in decent tunes while he waited for her to arrive. Because they desired a well-behaved son, the married couple was disgusted by his behavior. They began tossing pudding and spinach around. The newlyweds walked out of the pharmacy, declaring they'd prefer to adopt a dog instead. Conrad was left alone with his family after the owner of the factory and his workers left. Conrad, seven years old boy made in a factory that specialized in producing well-behaved children. Because of his upbringing, he had a hard time relating to other people. As for self-defense, he had no idea what he was doing. To show his devotion for his family, Conrad resolves to break the rules and disobey, something he has never done before. He's humble, intelligent, and tolerant of others' differences. Berta Bartolotti, a special lady that is her years, looked and acted eccentric. When it came to her loved ones, she didn't give a damn about what other people thought and she didn't like to obey regulations. Even though she was a carpet maker, she wasn't a materialist, therefore she only created carpets when they were really necessary. Many individuals were uninteresting to her because they didn't stand out, yet she accepted everyone who wasn't evil. Among the many things she could accept or comprehend was evil. Egon, pharmacist and Berta's friend whose life was work and nothing else until he takes on the obligation of being Conrad's father. The importance of education was important to him as a dad, and he valued his children's intelligence highly. Berta found him monotonous since he constantly followed the rules, although he always had the best of intentions. Berta and Egon were drawn to one another because of their unique personalities. For Conrad, they were the ideal set of guardians. Kitty, a seven-years-old girl. She lived next door to Berta and was good friends with Conrad. She was well-behaved, intelligent, and protective of Conrad, who was defenseless in the situation. For his sake, she even lied and plotted. She had a lot of guts and was resourceful. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this. See you in next video.